Well, right now, if you look around in the world, and I go into this in the book a lot, especially because I wrote this in the immediate aftermath of the Bruin decision, um, we're still at the um, we're still at the jury box level on this on a lot of issues. And I also try to get we got a lot of people on our side who get black pill doom, you know, like 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 we're, we've already lost. It's hopeless. You know, I don't buy into that because I started doing this 30 years ago. And when we got into this 30 years ago, we had Bill Clinton, the assault weapons ban. We all thought we were within five years of losing our Second Amendment rights forever. Totally. Um, we were ostracized. We were seen as weird. Culturally, we we had stagnated and become insular. And what do I what do I see now? Thirty years later, I see 20, 25 states, almost going to be twenty six if Florida pulls this off. Constitutional carry states. When I was young, it was one. Um, it was and uh, shall issue uh, um, CCW was like seven or eight states, and now it's all of them. Well, I mean, obviously we have seven holdouts are fighting in court, but once again we're back in court. Um, the culture is growing. Gun sales are through the roof because every time there's been a bad thing, like 2020 was shattered gun sale records because regular people who were on the, the, the fence sitters I was talking about all of a sudden looked around and said, oh, wow, I'm on my own. No one's coming to save me. I'm it. And they went to their local store and they're like, give me whatever you got. And it wasn't our people buying these guns in 2020. We already got ours. We don't pay scalpers prices. I don't pay MSRP, <laughs> you know. Um, Never pay MSRP. No, no one. I mean, who does that? <laughs> but so look at this. We're we are culturally winning. Uh, legally, we are making huge gains and we have some setbacks. Like right now we have the, the ATF brace ban. Uh, 120 days just kicked in. Right. And, I, you know, I, I have to decide what am I going to do? I have a stack of these things because, you know, and I'm not alone. And there's they estimate 40 million of them in circulation. Uh, the ATF just said, hey, comply or you're felons. And so that's going to court. I mean, I've already saw this morning, I was looking at the FPC lawsuit that just barely uh, got filed. I don't know yep. any details yet. I know SAF, GOA, ILA, they're all suing too. Mm -hmm. And and what's going to happen in the next 120 days? I can't say. I don't know. Uh, I can't they have a pretty good shot though, I would say. Yeah. I mean, I hopefully, hopefully we continue winning at the court level. But the thing people need to remind, remember is courts take time and if you look at like uh, the bump stock ban, we recently just got to stop on the bump stock ban. And what did that take? Four years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? And so, but the real thing is who's going to get victimized and rolled up uh, in federal gun control violations in the meantime? And that's the, that's the tragic part. Yeah, certainly there's uh, there's plenty of uh, uh, ongoing controversies that still exist. It's uh, not a perfect utopia for gun owners uh, at this point, but but yeah, I think it's a very valid point, and you do talk about this in the book as well, that there has been a lot of progress if you're a gun rights advocate uh, over the last 30 years. And um, yeah, there's no reason to think that that will stop suddenly now. Um, and, uh, you know, and you talk about getting people involved. You know, that's sort of the next step after, you know, buying, buying guns, you know, you can find ways to get involved in the, the effort to expand gun rights in America. Um, and, you know, there's all sorts of different ways about that. That was another thing I, I enjoyed about the book is like, again, this is sort of that, uh, there's the stereotype of what people might think of, uh, you know, a gun night book is going to be like, and then there's what your book is actually like. Uh, and you talk about, you know, the, uh, the grandfather takes their, their, uh, you know, their granddaughter shooting for the first time and helps, uh, you know, ingrain that, that culture into, uh, their their family members is doing just as much for uh, improving gun rights in the country as uh, you know somebody who's knocking on their their congressman's door or what have you. Yep, it's one of those things that like honestly, this is a battle of the culture war, and it's become a become a thing. That a lot of people hate guns and hate gun culture just because they're supposed to. It's a religious thing, and how do you overcome that is just teaching people, helping people, uh, help your neighbors, help your friends, teach your kids, teach other people's kids, get them to the range, show them that this stuff is not crazy, wacky, all the stuff you're showing on the news. Um, <clears throat> you know, I like, I like to take, when I built my house, uh, where I live now, the very first thing I did before I built the house was build a range. I pushed up berms and what was the very first thing I did with my new neighbors. I was actually a church youth activity 
or I put on a little like three hour pistol clinic for a bunch of the local teenagers. You know, nice. you just got to you got to keep teaching them. 